Good morning and welcome to This Weekend's Brunch Club, where we toast to all the amazing, diversely faceted women out there, filling your cup with inspiration and encouragement as our guests share their personal stories, experiences with careers, family, parenting, equality, mentoring, and advice. The Brunch Club is where we raise a glass and champion female talent and leadership everywhere, and where sparkling is always encouraged. Now, here is your host, Rachel Swoboda. Good. All right. So this is our very first uh, brunch club on Zoom that we've ever done before during the, you know, coronavirus shutdown. And so this is a totally different format, but I'm excited to be here with Taylor Thompson, who I'm getting to know. And as we were kind of pre-gaming for this, um, I loved what you were saying. And so I had to stop you and we have to officially start because what you were sharing was so fantastic. Um, as we got to know each other, I know our audience already knows me pretty well, but um, I don't normally talk about like some of the personal background things that we were just bonding about. And yeah, I was sharing that I'm, you know, a single mom, I'm a domestic violence survivor, I'm a a business owner, I own two businesses now. And uh, I think we have a lot in common. So let me just throw it over to you and let's start with the personal stuff. Keep going. Yeah, well, um, so yeah, we were just having this conversation. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I grew, I was, I was the only child, but I grew up be, uh, watching uh, my mom basically survive domestic violence. I was, I was kidnapped at gunpoint at the age of five. What? Um, yeah. Um, after watching my mom, you know, I, I mean, I can see it clear as a bell in my mind sitting there watching her, you know, beaten bloody with a gun pointed at her and my oh dad. My yeah. So saying, you Where, know, what area did you grow up in? Um, West Texas. I'm a West Texas girl, you know, okay. I, All right. Yeah. And, uh, I was actually born in Oklahoma, but raised in West Texas all of my entire life, pretty wow. much. Okay. Um, but so he left with me and my, um, at gunpoint said, if you try to stop me, I'll, I'll kill you. Um, oh and God. he, proceeded to throw me in the back of a car and tell me to lay down in the floor plan and not get up. And at five, at the age of five. Wow. And I don't know if I'm dead or alive for 10 months. Did you catch that? Wait, for 10 months? Yeah. For Where 10 were months. you for 10 months? We were on the run. Oh we were... Uh, I, I wasn't able to get, go outside the home. Um, I wasn't able to go outside at all. I can only go out at night, but I thought that was normal. You know, whenever you're a little kid, you don't know what you don't know. You don't, you don't know that this is not how everybody else is. Mm -hmm. This is what kids do, right? You don't know that that's not normal. Yes. And, um, so, um, um, so I had the FBI looking for me, my, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was a big deal. And it came down to a showdown in Oklahoma that, um, that's where his family was from, and that's where my mom's family was from, okay. and uh, we were there visiting his grandmother in, in Oklahoma, and uh, she wow. turned, because my mom, this whole time, desperate to, his whole, you know, trying to reach out to his entire family, is she okay, is she okay, and nobody would ever even let her know, and um, it was finally his grandmother that was like, she turned him in. And I remember I was hiding under a dining room table at a big dining room window, looking out and seeing all the flashing lights and all the police cars everywhere, oh you know, God. you know, waiting to get me. And I could see my mom and I remember waving to my mom, um, you know, cause you know, and you just don't know. I mean, it's just like, that's, that's what happened. And um, so that's, and in, in the course of that, my mom actually met my stepfather who ended up raising me in, in the course of all of this, looking for me in this process. So I was literally thrown in from being away from my mom into, uh, with a new man, new stepfather, you know, new set of circumstances. Um, and, um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the first part of, that's the first part of my life. And so, and, and so my stepfather was, you know, quite interesting and, um, I was starting school. So I, this was like the summer before I started school and I had really long, I have, you can't see it now, but I have like really, like really, really curly hair. And so my, my, my mom was a nurse and she worked shift work and, um, he was like, I can't deal with her hair. You're going to have to cut it all off. 
And so I had long hair down to my waist and my, um, my dad, my stepdad had it all cut off. And so I had this short hair oh and getting on a school bus, lived on a farm, get on a school bus. And that's whenever the bullying started. So I was bullied. I mean, kids on the school bus, they called me a werewolf. Can you even imagine calling a little girl a werewolf? Right? No, this is uh, terrible. Like, like yeah. talk about overcoming challenges as an adult. You're what, probably like no more than 10 and you've probably been through more than what people go through in a lifetime. Yeah, well, and, and but, you know, here's the thing. I mean, I think, you know, I, you, it's one of those things you go, okay, life either happens to you or for you. Yeah. But, you know, not knowing all that now. And so, and through my course of, I mean, and I was always really tall, right? So right. you can't see, I'm sitting down, but I'm five foot 11. Okay. So I was always really tall. Um, and so I got teased for curly hair. Um, I went to five different elementary schools. So from first grade to sixth grade. So I moved a lot. So the blessing in that was, is that I learned how to make friends quickly. I had to yes. adjust and, and to, cause we moved all over West Texas. So that was a blessing because I, it made me get out of my comfort zone and, and to be friendly and outgoing and, and make friends easily. So that was, that was kind of cool. Um, I love that you see the silver lining in things and you don't take that victim of like mentality to anything. You're like, okay, this happened. We're going to deal with it and I'm going to use it to yeah. make my life better. But you know, I don't know that that was always the case. I don't, I mean, looking back, I don't know that that was always the case. And that was the mindset that I had, because I think that I, it was only later. And, you know, because friends, whenever I moved so much and, and I finally got rooted by the, by the time I was in, uh, cause I was right. I lived in a mobile home. Like I was, I was the girl on the other side of the tracks. Right. Yeah. Got it. And so the first time that I actually lived in a real house, right you know, that wasn't a mobile home. I was like in junior high. And then, um, and then my parents ended up moving me my junior year in high school. So I'd, I'd established all of this rooted, you know, friends and, Finally. and yeah. you know, really like got rooted and they up and, you know, root, uprooted me at, at that age. And I remember it was really, I, I was, I, I was, Because, but I always know that God has a plan. Like, so whenever I look back at it, like the, where I was going in the course of my life, it was probably not on a really great path because I probably got involved with probably the wrong crowd. And so whenever I moved, so I moved from the, my class of, you know, over 400, mm -hmm. um, my, in my sophomore year to, I moved to my, so starting my junior year in high school, a class of 22 people, right? Yeah. So I was an always, and so I was an always an athlete. I was always very athletic. I was an all around athlete, basketball, volleyball, track. Um, and so, so I poured everything into athletics. Mm -hmm. And so, which was kind of like a good peer pressure kind of thing growing up, which was, you know, um, I was an all state basketball player. I got a college scholarship. Um, yeah. So, but the, I was a college athlete too, by the way, soccer. Wow. So, and, and yeah. so, and, but I was, I was always at event, but my family never supported me. I went, you know, I was this all around athlete and this, but my, my, my family didn't come support me at my games. I, I never grew up with that. Right. That yeah, was not, that was, that was not. And, and I never even, I, it never even occurred to me really about going to college really, you know? And so I was like, Oh, so because that wasn't the environment that I was really raised in. It was, yeah. it was interesting, but mm -hmm. I was in church and I went to church and that was a big foundational piece of my life because my grandmother, she was always about, you know, are you in church? I wasn't, my, my mom and dad didn't go to church, but my grandmother was like, always talked to me about church. And so I got rooted in church there. And, and so I went off to, went off to college. I actually turned down the scholarship because I had, I had some physical issues with my shoulders so I had like what they called chronic dislocating shoulders and so my shoulders would I, I, at any given time would come out during the course of the game and so that and so it was like I just I walked away from a from a college you know scholarship but I ended up in I ended up in West Texas at going mm -hmm. to school that's where I met my first husband he was a college athlete you know, he was a 12 time all American shot, put discus and hammer guy, you know, had it all together, you know? Um, 
checked all the boxes or so you know, it seems yeah <laughs> it seemed um come from a good all this stuff you know but um i and, and you know here's the thing this is where that self-esteem issue you know all these things that had happened to me up until that point i didn't realize you know that i was being set up right because i remember whenever he asked me to marry him it wasn't because i was so anxious to say yes it was because i was afraid to say no okay. it had already it had already started right but you start justifying those things in your mind especially if you don't have a real high self-esteem right all, so all of those things were really starting to catch up with the mindset right and how you my how i saw myself how i valued myself um and so you start living you you don't realize that what you watch what you learn what you what you live what you watch what how i watched my mom you know grow up or or being raised around that that was impacting my life at that time because i didn't have the confidence to get out yeah and so we got married and um you know and it was fine because i mean and he ended up he ended up being drafted he ended up playing professional football you know, so I was the professional football player's wife, you know, I went through all of those, those things. So I was, I had a place, I had a role and, and it was okay because he had the upper hand. Yeah. There was no pushback, right? Mm -hmm. There was, the, I, I, I was just. The power was, structure was very clear. It was very clear. Yeah. It was very clear, right? And um, so he was uh, he had actually he this is whenever l um he was drafted by the oilers i don't know if houston that's whenever they you had the houston oilers uh, at that time that was around that was in 1990 um and then he ended up getting traded to the la raiders that's whenever raiders were in la not in oakland and um remember. yeah and um so and i was living with this so he was off in la the first time i flew into la the la was on fire you know, remember the riots you yeah, know? yeah. I mean, like I, la was literally on fire i mean lax was a ghost town and i was flying in to tell him that was my first visit i was flying in to tell him that i was pregnant oh geez and um so we ended up we moved to um furniture hadn't even and we were here in LA our furniture hadn't even arrived and it was the first visit with my uh with my OB okay. and I was eight months pregnant and um they couldn't find a heartbeat oh no my first visit with my doctor here I'm eight months pregnant I have I have no I have no support system um and I remember going through this process and so they told me like the baby had demised Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And, you know, I mean, I look back on it now, you know, now, I mean, again, I see the silver lining, you know, but I just remember at the time, like, you know, how is this happening? How is this possible? Yeah. You know, and I remember like it registering with me, like, okay, this has just got to go away. But whenever it was, whenever they were communicating with me, you have to deliver this baby. It just, it, it, I couldn't connect the dots. I just couldn't, I'm like, how is it, you mean I have to go through this physical thing knowing that there's no baby, yeah. baby on the other end? I mean, it was so hard. I mean, I just remember like, it couldn't resonate. I just couldn't mm. do it. And, and then they said, we're, we're gonna have to induce labor and it's probably gonna be about 48 hours. And I thought, how can I possibly endure 48 hours? How's this even, how's that even possible? So and you'll probably know this in Orange County. Um, I actually was at the hospital there in Torrance, little company of Mary. Okay. All right. In Torrance, California. Um, and, um, and I was really thankful for that because I mean, we're going through this process, they induced labor and she came like less than 12 hours and, um, she was beautiful, beautiful, but she had a, a she, she had a hole in her back and it was spina bit she had spina bifida mm -hmm. and i didn't know that because i didn't go through any of those testing processes because it was like i don't need to know that because it wasn't going to change anything whether i did or didn't do anything at that point right because i was gonna have i mean that i that wasn't my belief system mm -hmm. but i was really blessed because you know here i'm at this hospital with these nuns and they really they were like you you have to hold the baby oh. and I, 
and I, you know, I really, I, I, I didn't know if I could do it emotionally, but I'm so glad that I did because I don't, I, and I don't remember actually all of it. Like in my mind, I, I physically, that you kind of block it off, you kind of block it out. But I remember, you know, the, the pain of it, like going home and the empty feeling and going through the, the milk coming in, but with no, you know, having, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, whenever your milk comes in, but you know, then, I mean, I had to wrap myself and I had to wrap my boobs. Like it was so miserable. God, yeah, it was terrible. But I, I found the support system because the ladies in the the NFL, like there were there were a lot of strong, really strong Christians, and they invited me to this ladies' Bible study. And I connected, you know, God was just so like amazing. He connected me with somebody that had just been through the process. And, you know, it was just like, you know, one of those things, it's such a healing thing whenever you have somebody in your life that can relate to what you've experienced that can help you see that there's light on the other side of this and um so it was it was such a blessing because i mean i got involved in the that bible study and that ladies group and it, i really grew i really connected just in my whole my whole being my whole relationship with with god and and i and i look back on it now it's like that was such a blessing right that i okay i this baby didn't have to be handicapped all over she would have never been able to walk it would have you know what i mean so oh, yeah but i was pregnant so i ended up getting pregnant six weeks later oh wow six okay weeks, uh, yeah so <laughs> six that? weeks later six weeks later i'm pregnant and going through this process again oh my and you know I was, so i was a little emotionally disconnected but because whenever you think about it like so this was um september 15th of 1992 I had the first baby and I had my oldest September 5th of 1993 so I had two babies inside of one year Ooh, right coaster. yeah right. and um so so at that so I had her and so now in the process of all this my husband towards Achilles tendon career ending injury we're now moving back to Texas I have a four-week-old baby he has no job. We have no income. Oh my God. This Texas, right? Um, and that's whenever the real issues started because he was going back to school. His self esteem, his, you know, who he was, you know, this big college athlete, NFL star, like now this is, now he's down here, right? And now I'm looking for a way because I have a brand new baby. We've got to make income. What am I going to do? Right. So, you know, the mom thing, the entrepreneur kicks in yeah. and I don't know that that's what it is. Right. But, you know, like the first time you hold the baby, like, OK, I cannot put this baby in daycare. I mean, like that. I could not connect with that at all. Like after walking through, I'm like, I have to. I, ha I have to take care of it. I, cannot, I, 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 I can't imagine putting this baby in anybody else's hands. Right. So I, I justify, I was like, if I could find a way that I could make $800 a month and still be able, I, I figured that was equivalent to me working full time and paying for daycare, right? Okay. So that was my, that was my, that was my mindset. That was my goal. And I tried, I said, I, I mean, like Rebecca, I answered like crazy ads. And this is like whenever, this is before internet, this is before cell phones. If you can even imagine like oh, yeah. you know, newspapers in the ad, you know, work, you know, one ad section. You know. the things. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, work from home and they had all this crazy, like work from home stuff envelopes. I did that stuff mm -hmm. envelopes. Make extra, right. Yeah. Make um, calls. Yeah. Anything. I, I tried all of this stuff. I made beaded jewelry from home. Like I, I get these little kits that I really believed that this was going to be a real deal, you know, and I was supposed to make 20 pair to be part time. And, you know, after, you know, after two and a half hours, I hadn't even completed one earring. I'm like, okay, this is not legit. I mean, this is, and so I was answering these ads in the newspaper, you know, and you got to think back like that long ago, in network marketing, it was an Herbalife ad. 
And um, so I was like, I don't want to sell anything. I can't sell anything, right? Because there was this little lady that lived across the street from me and she had all these bumper stickers all over her car, these magnetic signs, you know, lose weight now, ask me how, you know. I was like, I'm definitely not interested in that, right? Yeah. And, um, but what happened for me is, is that um, I answered this ad. And so this is West Texas and there was this little bitty town outside of where we lived, a really small town, about 15,000 people. And they were telling me about how this couple was making $10,000 a month. And you have to think about that. That's, you know, um, 20 years ago. Um, I was like, I never thought in a million years I could make $10,000 a month. But what I did here is, gosh, if they can make 10,000, surely I can make 800. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I, I got started and I got started working from home. I made $420 my very first week. I made $2,400 my very first month. And that really set the pace for, you know, the success that I was, that I was, would eventually, eventually yeah. have, you know. That's fantastic. Right. And, and, and it was, it was amazing. It was such a godsend. It was such a blessing. However, the more, the more I was having success, the more I started in my business, the more independent that I have, like, so now comes the competition at home. Yeah. Now I'm, now I'm, I'm starting to be my own person. Mm -hmm. Now the personal growth starts coming in. Now the confidence starts coming out because of, you know, I'm seeing who I am. I'm seeing, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm somebody, I, I can do this. My confidence. And the more that, the more confident that I became, the more abusive it became at home. Yeah. Because now I'm not in the shadow anymore. Now I'm in the forefront. Now I'm equal. I'm the personal growth and it was became a, a competition at home. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. It I know the story. Is this all sounding very familiar? Yes. It's 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 super crazy. You would think that you would think that your your spouse would be like, oh you go girl. Like, proud of you. Yeah. But so proud of you. one in four women in America yeah. that this happens to and like more often than not, it's women who are succeeding and women who are achieving great things. That's when it happens because you, you're like, well, I can fix things. And you take that mentality that you're bringing to your job that makes you really good at your job of, you know, problem solving and achieving. You're like, okay, I can fix this when I apply the same techniques to my marriage and it just doesn't work that way. It, seems it does me. work. It, it, and, and you know, but what, What's inter what's interesting about it, so 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 you know whenever you looked at his life because his parents were married there's family I come from this broken family and so whenever we would have conflict he would blame it on me uh -huh. it was because of my baggage yeah. it was because there was something wrong with me yeah. right it was. It was all because I had come from, it was all my fault. Mm. His life was perfect. How could there be anything wrong with him? Oh, so yeah, everything was <laughs> always directed at me, right? Oh, God. Well, and so, and, and in the, so in the course of this, you know, um, you know, so I, you know, before we got married, I, I, I'll throw this in because, you know, I, I'd actually competed in the, in the Miss Texas pageant. Uh, before we were married I and and because so you know I was you know I, I I had I had my thing and I had I was looking for my validations right and things that I was doing yeah. and so I uh, but I, I knew that it was like all of that was superficial and I was really always about me was wanting about family it, it was always about wanting family and the things that I didn't have Right. You know, it's like whenever you grow up without something, you swing the pendulum to something that you want to do and be, you know, everything that you didn't get, you want to provide. Um, yeah, you hear that a lot. Yeah. And, and so that's, um, that was the thing that, okay. Do, does it say, it says remaining meeting time. Yeah. So it'll, it'll time out at 1040, but I love where we're going with this. So we'll like maybe, like stop the recording at 1040 and then we'll pick it back up and we'll do like part one was the past and part two, we'll just then start okay. The recording. Okay. Um, so, so then I ended up, so, 
so then I decided that I was like going to use a platform and I can so then I um, I competed in the Mrs. Texas pageant, but it was on a different platform and I was, you know, really starting to become involved with, you know, a, a platform and, and community and using my business to expand and have a and, and to grow my business uh, to to brand myself and, yeah. and you know what I mean before that was even a thing right. And, and so things really, really started growing for me. But the more I started growing, the, the, the competition was even exponent. The more it became more volatile, volatile. and comfortable at home. Yeah. But I was not telling anybody. I was not, nobody knew. Yep. No, my family, you know, nobody knew, nobody knew in my community. I was very involved with my church. I had an aerobic ministry. Um, where I was, I taught aerobics because, you know, that was what I had, you know, basically put myself through school with, you know, college. And I had, um, you know, working as a personal trainer, working as aerobic instructor. So I was doing that. I was taking all of those things and, and putting it in really, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the little one. Um, so I, so I was doing all of those things. Um, and, and it just became more of a threat. And then this time, then I was pregnant with the second baby. So the second one comes along and, you know, so this, this whole process uh, and he's, he's, he's now he's a coach. He's now coaching high school, never there. I'm literally there basically being a single mom, you know, building and running my business around my kids and everything that they, you know, being a stay at home mom, but being a stay at home entrepreneur at the same time. And, um, so, and then I got pregnant right away with our third. And that was, that was, a, that was, a, that was, a, that was a really, really challenge because I remember like crying for months, like, how is this possible? I only have two hands. Yeah. I, what am I going to do with a third? You know, it was, it was, it was daunting for me. And, um, you know, at this time, like I had built my income. I mean, I was, you know, I was in the six figures Okay. and, and doing really well. But it was so, so volatile at home. Yeah. To the point, I mean, like I was calling, I was, I was calling the police, you know, yeah, because. Regularly? How, how many, how, how many years was it volatile at home? Yeah. So it was like, I mean, whenever it was, you know, the last three years, it was really, really. And we were. You know, I was like, we have to go to count. I mean, because, you know, that's the last thing that you want to do at home is to break, right? Yeah. You don't want to do that. And so, uh, you know, you're, you're fighting for something because you're fighting for your children. You're fighting, like, can this work out? And, you know, and so, I mean, I would be like, okay, we've got to go. To, we've got to do something. We've got to go to counseling. We've got to do something. And he was, he was, you know, he didn't want to go to counseling at church because he didn't want to expose anything. Of course. But going to a counselor outside of that, he was like, I don't understand why I have to go to counselor whenever all of our problems is your fault. I mean, it's your baggage. It's it your starts, broken home. You start to think like, am I going crazy? Is it really? Me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Or, oh, girl, that's exactly you. And, and you, you start to get yourself and you're not telling anybody. So you're not, you don't have a sounding board and you're like, well, maybe it is me. Maybe, maybe this is my fault. What did I do? you nailed it. That's exactly, this is exactly where you nailed it. Like, I, this is exactly like, I'm like, okay, I, I, I mean, maybe I do need to work harder on myself. I mean, like really. So, and so I was doing like all the, I mean, Joyce Meyer became like a big, I don't, she became like my mentor. I started reading books, you know, about like, you know, and really working on myself. But the more I worked on myself and my personal development, the more I outgrew him. Yes, which he hated. Which he, he hated. hated. Down here. And it's also really confusing because they cycle like this. So like they're really good and then they're really bad. And then you're like, well, what did I do to make them dip again? Like on that. It's so confusing. It, it's, it was so confusing. And, and, and have you ever, I, by the way, like... Fast forwarding ahead just for a second. Did you ever read that book by Leslie Morgan Steiner called Crazy Love? It was on no. the bestseller list. It came out some years ago now. 
but it is like her and she's a uh, very like accomplished author and she's been through this and I, I got to know her pretty well and it's phenomenal when you start talking to other women who've been through it and you're like me too me too I read her book and it was like a game changer because I was like I'm not crazy it's 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 very true because I mean because because you don't like nobody in my life knew yeah. I was going to count. I was going to marriage counseling by myself. <sighs> I mean, trying to solve it. Yeah. And, and so whenever it got down to like the, what, you know, I remember the, one of the times that he did come, you know, whenever the Christian counselors telling, he literally said, until you start taking some responsibility for your role in this relationship, this relationship, marriage stands a snowball's chance in hell. Wow. And, and so, and it was like, then I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not too crazy mm -hmm. because I, I got a little bit of validation, you know, from that. And so, but what happened was, was that it was one night, it was one night and, um, we, we were getting ready for the dry, the, the, the carpet cleaners were coming the next day and he was, he was habitually on. And now this time, you know, this is a uh, computer was out, you know, we had computers. So he was playing like computer games, like all the time, even two and three o'clock in the morning. And in, in the midst of this, I was finding 900 <laughs> charges, 900 number charges on our phone. Now, most people may not know what 900 numbers are, but oh yeah, they're the dial for money numbers. And there was, there was always, there was always, there was always excuses and always reasons. And, um, but this particular night, um, you know, I set him off. I mean, cause I was needing his help. I was trying to get the girls in bed. I have three little girls trying to get them in bed. I've got the baby in my arms and he lost it on me because I was asking him to help. And I was taking him away from his game and he lost it on me. And he, he um he literally threw me across the room with her in my arms and that was whenever i knew i knew that this is it yeah that was i mean so be, so at that point i picked i took her i put her in her bed and he's trying he's coming after me and i i pushed him away from me and he spit in my face. And then he literally threw me up against the, it threw, I, there was a, up against the, there was a bed sitting there and I hit the railing. And not, oh. and I remember it very, very clearly, very clearly. And it was like, it, this is what I remember, Rebecca. I remember like, you know, like I, I can imagine like these strings on my head, like these emotional cords. It was like somebody just cut the, the emotional cord. Like I was done. Yeah. There was no going back. Mm -mm. Done. Like I, 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 there was no feeling every emotion gone out, gone. And so whenever he came to that realization, then he started trying to, you know, Oh my God, nobody will ever love you. Like I love you. Nobody will, you know, I mean, and, and so then he became this Jekyll and Hyde, you know, oh, yes. textbook. And, textbook and I mean he would and and I'm trying to survive he would literally he keep me up at night he would not let me go to sleep he would trying to just try to have a just talk to me just talk to me and I'm like you know I was so just like done and no this way. is what I so to to your point I came to this place I, this I, the, the way I described it I was like I have to get out mm -hmm. I have to get out Thanks for stopping by The Brunch Club. It's been our pleasure to share this time with you. We look forward to bringing you more sparkling inspiration next weekend. If you have feedback, topics, or want to nominate someone to be a guest on the show, please reach out to us at rachel at sundaybrunchagency.com. Cheers. Welcome to Sunday Brunch. We're a boutique advertising agency located here in Orange County, California. Sunday Brunch, we custom build teams for all of our clients. 
Each team member's both personal passions and professional excellence is matched up to meet the needs of your business. Capabilities range from brand building, design, public relations, social media, websites, media planning, buying, working with influencers, events, and even more. Want to contact us? We'd love to hear from you. Follow us on Instagram or online at sundaybrunchagency.com.